Hi, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another episode at Utopia Farms. Skipped yesterday's video and was gonna skip today too, only because um, I just haven't been feeling well at all lately. Um, but our accountant was just here and we were talking about aliens and stuff like that. And so I'm starting to feel a little bit better. So I thought we'd go out and have a look at what Arnie's doing. He uh, made a bunch of dry hay. It's going to rain tomorrow, so he wanted to get it all in today. He just cut a few fields down, just uh, small ones. And we got some really nice dry hay. And the dry hay we don't have to wrap, obviously. So it's uh, much nicer that way, much quicker to make it, and we store it under these lean-tos, and we do store it in the shed as well. This hay, of course, when you use the Pro Bonnet, uh, will be less than 18% moisture. Otherwise, it would mold. unhooks the wagons and gathers them up and we get uh, I think he's doing 24 per load this farm also goes from the road we live on which is right here and it goes right across to the next road at the back, so we have frontage on both sides. But we're into the warm, dry weather now, and this uh, hay, it's much more mature, and it has um, a lot more grasses in it than alfalfa, so it's uh, easy to dry down and make dry hay right now. Earlier in the year when the hay is younger and you got more alfalfa and you have a lot of moisture in the air, you know we had a wet uh, spring, then it is almost impossible to make dry hay. But right now it's drying hay weather. We are supposed to get rain tomorrow, but we actually need it because after tomorrow we got two weeks with no rain. And that's as far as the forecast shows. So we definitely want the rain tomorrow because uh, we need the rain. But after that, we will be finishing off the dry hay first cut. When we get back, we're going on a trip to um, the All Canada Classic in a few days. 
so I'll be offline for a couple of days, but I will make videos of the classic while I'm there and I'll post them when I get back. The classic is, um, it's the big Canadian show and sale. So every sheep that gets shown there is also sold. So you get to bid on sheep that have competed against each other. So it's not like a regular auction where you just go in and buy the sheep. You actually see how the sheep you bought performed against others, which is nice. So because uh, everything looks good until you put it beside something else and then maybe it doesn't look so good anymore or maybe it looks even better. Um, we're not in the market for anything really, but we're going to go and uh, just support the show and be there. Normally in the past we've spent uh, lots of money at the Classic, but I'm hoping that we're not buying too much there, if anything, this year. So his baler twine got, came loose, so he's going to just wrap it up by hand a little bit. We're having beautiful weather right now. I know in the United States it's been scorching hot. Oh, and that reminds me, um, happy July 4th to all our American viewers. Today's July 4th. I know this won't be posted till the 5th, but... That's 15 acres of the marshland, black muck. Yeah. And that should be against the law that no farmer can ever tile drain down and dry it out. That's but right. I guarantee you, when I retire, they'll be right on to that to drain that and, uh, and farm it. Oh, well, but it'll still be yours, Arnie. So, uh -huh. until you die. Yeah. You're saying that farmers, we do have some land there that we could tear it down. There's about 15 acres. It's not marshland, but it's, uh, it's, it's swampy, kind of, not swampy, it's just wet and mucky, so we just let it grow with little bushes and um, grasses and stuff and let the wildlife live in there. But uh, he was saying that a lot of farmers would have torn that down and drained it and made use of it. But at our age, we're past that stage. We don't, we want to leave some for nature. So that's what that is. Later we'll be hanging, when we get back, we'll be hanging the back of this property. And we often thought of building a house back there. Um, it's got lots of oak trees and it's a beautiful spot, a little higher up than uh, down here. But if you remember when we were cutting the hay off earlier, how I said the ground when we cut it off looked almost like a golf course, like it was nice and green and cut off. And you can see this is typical hay weather because the ground, when you cut it off, it looks like it's brown now. It's all dried up. It doesn't look like a golf course anymore. There's one bale left over the drain here. So um, some of our properties have a municipal drain on it. And this is one. So it runs through our property and helps drain the land. It's not... Um, it's technically not ours, it's technically government, so they're supposed to maintain the culverts and make sure it flows. But we have a few properties that the drain goes through. So if uh, something goes wrong with a culvert, every property that has the drain going through it has to pay into it 
so that uh, no one person is paying the whole fee and the government doesn't pay it. They only pay a little portion. It's the people whose property it's on divide the pay payments because inevitably these culverts need to be repaired. And over here I just saw some nice flowers. glory there. And I think those white ones are swamp marigolds. And this long grass in the center here, that's reed canary. I think I mentioned that grass before to you. It's a really fast growing long grass. It has lots of leaves on it, but the sheep do not like it at all. They, they will not eat it. So in the past we've cut it down for bedding and it makes really nice bedding, but it's kind of um, in a low spot here where it tends to get wet. And this year, since we have an abundance of hay and straw, we're going to have straw when we cut our barley off, we decided just to leave this natural and stay in the field this year. So as I walk by this reed canary, you can see how tall it is. Like, I'm five foot and it's these heads come up five feet for sure. They're over my head, actually. It's too bad they don't like this feed because uh, there is lots of leaves in it, but the flavor of it, they just mustn't like it at all. But here are those uh, wild peas that they do like that go in uh, the mixes. And you see, they got little, they're forming little pea pods. They're not actual peas that you eat, but the sheep will eat that. They really like that stuff. It has the purple flowers. Two more and we're going to head home. And then he'll have one more load left and this field will be all home before the rain. We got all the hay in. This lean to is full now. And there's all the rat bales. And this is nighttime chores now. We made it in before the rain. As you can see it's really clouding over now and I think tomorrow is supposed to be a total rain day but it's supposed to start this evening so Arnie was just putting some more creek feed out 
for these monsters. Those are the lambs. They're pretty big now. Hi, you guys. Hi, you guys. How you doing? You look a little warm. Are you warm? Hi. Hi. Oh my goodness. Let's go visit. Hi. like you're on a mission to say hello. You looked like you were on a mission. Yeah, you did. Come on then. Hi, you guys. Are you coming in to eat now? You must be hungry after a day grazing in the fields. Silly sheep. Oh, you got diarrhea or is that dried up? Oh, no, that's dried up. I you can see how it's all crusted. That means I've treated her and it's dried up. We don't want to see it wet. But I think I got a pretty good lid on it. Hi! Hi! Come on you guys, he's feeding grain! They're still getting the routine, these guys. <laughs> Come on, the grain's this way. Oh, gotta chase them up. There, now they figured it out. They'll go through the door. There they are. That's the last of them. There, the lambs are all in for the night. I was going to say everyone is in early tonight, but then I looked in this little side paddock and these guys haven't gone in yet. And then I looked to see why they haven't gone in yet. Because the Shetland's still out here. And uh, she she's always the last in and she always has a little following. So we'll get these guys in. Dry ewes are now getting grain. Even though they're out on pasture and have hay, um, the Suffolk need a little bit more. That's why I took out a whole bunch of white sheep from in here. Because uh, some of the Suffolk were getting, were not gaining any condition, and in fact, they were losing condition. So um, we start breeding our Suffolk middle of August, so we have to get them into good shape for breeding. So Arnie will be bringing them some grain over in a second.
This is like one of those concerts where they kind of tease you. They show their face and then they disappear. Finally, the show begins. was one 35 pound pail and there is approximately 250 sheep in here most of them are in pretty good shape but we saw, because before when the 35 extra dorsets were in here, people kind of had to take their turn to eat. And so obviously the bully ones push in first and uh, thinner ones or the ones who don't stand up for themselves as much would get pushed out and would feed later. But that would normally mean that they weren't getting any grain. So now um, everybody should have feeder space. I'm pretty sure all these guys are in, but I gotta go lock their gate. You guys all in? I think so. You guys are all in. Hi. Hi, Annie. That's Annie. Hi. Are you guys hungry? We know the rams are. The guys came in by themselves, but as I look towards the ram pasture, I see definitely half of the rams are still out at pasture. So we'll have to make sure they all come in when we go over and uh, lock them up for the night. So the big guys are in too now. The little guys, the teenagers, they totally harass the big guys. And they don't realize that if they make the big guys mad enough, they can really get hurt. But uh, the young ones want to establish dominance, eh? Hey buddy, are they irritating you? Are they irritating you? Yeah, they look like they're irritating you. They really do. Come here. We'll get those rams away from you. And what are you doing? Do we think that you're tougher when you do that? Do you think you can take that big guy on? Do you think he's a girl? I don't think so. You're being ridiculous. You're being ridiculous.
silly rams. Hi Jethro, do you have an itch? Do you have an itch, baby? Yeah, that foot looks like maybe you're itching it. Did a mosquito bite ya? They're nasty things, those mosquitoes. Hey? Eh? Yeah, they are. They're really nasty things, yeah. So, it's getting dark. Everybody's fed. All the hay's put it away now. It's clouding up. And we actually look forward to a day of rain tomorrow. So bring it on. Anyway, <laughs> as Jethro paws at the gate, we'll say goodbye. And hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.